So if you look at the present system that we have right now, there's a ownership of our water system. And Shea is going to talk to us about that ownership that oversees and control our water. Thank you, Paul. So I'm going to talk about the ownership of the East Maui irrigation system. Um, and a lot of folks think it's owned by Alexander and Baldwin or EMI and Mahipono. Um, so yes, for, so first we need to be very clear about who Mahipono really is. Um, according to their website, Mahipono is a local Maui farming company that was created in 2018 in a joint venture between Pomona Farming LLC, a California-based agricultural group, and the Public Sector Pension Investment Board, also known as PSP Investments, one of Canada's largest pension investment managers. So let's break that down a little bit. It's hard to know what is meant by local company when Mahipono is owned by a California ag company and a $171 billion Canadian pension fund. Also, while Pomona Farming is based in California, according to PSP's own 2022 annual report, PSP's ownership interest in Pomona Farming is 99%. So in reality, Mahipono is entirely controlled by the Canadian Pension Fund. And so here's what's listed by Hawaii's Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs. Uh, there's an entity called Mahipono LLC, and it was first registered in Hawaii on December 6, 2018, as a foreign limited liability company. Mahipono LLC has one member, Mahipono Holdings. Mahipono LLC states its purpose as the Public Sector Pension Investment Board. The address they list is Woodside Drive in Redwood City, California, which is Pomona Farming's address. So who is their member, Mahipono Holdings LLC? Again, per the Department of Commerce and Commu Consumer Affairs, Mahipono Holdings LLC is also a foreign limited liability company with the same mailing address, mailing address as Mahipono LLC, a slightly later registration date, Christmas Eve 2018, and their purpose is farming company. Their sole member is the Public Sector Pension Investment Board. So according to how they've presented themselves to the state of Hawaii, again, Mahipono and PSP, the Canadian Pension Fund, are one and the same. So for context, keep in mind that Mahipono purchased the 41,000 acres of AMB land and 50% of the EMI water system on December 17, 2018. That's 11 days after Mahipono became an entity in the state of Hawaii and a week before Mahipono Holdings LLC registered as an entity. So clearly the sole reason for creating Mahipono was for PSP to be able to purchase AMB and EMI with a Hawaii sounding name. So before we delve into the Canadian Pension Fund, I wanna talk very briefly about Pomona Farming. Though pa Mahipono barely mentions them or PSP on their website, the Pomona website lists Maui's lush greenbelt and Mahipono as our farmlands. They also include Maui Harvest, Maui Cattle Company, Shaka Tea, and Maui Grown Coffee as their family farming brands. Under its history section, Pomona Farming states that in 2017, the Public Sector Pension Investment Board bought the majority stake in a 10-year Oakdale-based almond portfolio and farming company and created Pomona Farming to invest in additional agricultural lands on behalf of PSP investments, both in almonds and other crop types. The website also states that in 2019, PSP Investments, in partnership with Pomona, and remember, PSP owns 99% of Pomona, closed an epic land purchase on Maui, creating Mahipono. So now we understand who Mahipono is. Why is it particularly bad that the largest private landowner on Maui and the entity that wants to control East Maui water for 30 years is a Canadian pension fund? So I wanna kind of back up because I think not everyone understands what a pension fund is. So um, let's start with the basics. A pension fund accumulates capital to be paid out as a pension for employees when they retire at the end of their careers. Pension funds invest large pools of money into private and public companies with a goal of ensuring that there will be enough money to cover the pensions of employees after their retirement in the future. So they need to make money in order to pay out for their beneficiaries. In the case of PSP, the beneficiaries are Canadian federal employees. 
According to an article in the Toronto Star about PSP, its mission is to maximize returns without taking undue risks. Canadian public pension funds are extremely effective and are the envy of the world. Since the 1970s, there's been a view that pension funds could be a potential source of working class power if workers could control investment policy. Workers' success in doing this, however, has been extremely limited due to legal parameters such as fiduciary duty and statutory mandates, alignment of interests in high returns to pay pensions, and lack of substantive democratic accountability on investment. Pension funds are becoming just as predatory as other forms of finance, taking advantage of neoliberalism, globalization, and colonialism, but especially privatization. The Canadian pension fund model has a reputation for being environmentally harmful and exploitative, particularly when it comes to fossil fuels, housing, health care, long-term care, and mass transportation. Since the 1990s, pension funds have played an increasingly active role in private equity operations, infrastructure privatization, and farmland acquisition. Canadian pension funds have also been very interested in water privatization. Over the last four years, two Canadian pension funds acquired controlling interest in a Brazilian private equity firm that spent $266 million to work with the Bolsonaro government to privatize Rio de Janeiro's public water system, which will cut thousands of unionized jobs, severely reduce service, and likely make water unaffordable for many. The Ontario Teachers' Pension Plan has become the majority shareholder in three key water utilities in Chile, and investment by Quebec pension funds in dam building in Colombia has displaced communities. Community activists opposed to the schemes have disappeared or been killed. When it comes to PSP in particular, in addition to their efforts to control water on Maui, PSP was involved in a multi-billion dollar controversial water privatization initiative in Australia's Murray-Darling Basin that, that occurred during a crippling national drought and destructive forest fires. And you probably heard about those fires, right? Um, recently, PSP has been getting attention for its direct ownership of elder care homes and investments in rental properties. In 2020, PSP was in the news for neglect at its Rivera Elder Care Homes in Canada. Rivera staff and family members have said the company failed to prevent COVID-19 from spreading through its homes, and a class action lawsuit is seeking $100 million in damages. The Public Service Alliance of Canada, which is a huge union for government employees, has 230,000 members, 15 other unions and health organizations are calling on PSP to transfer ownership of Rivera into public hands. And what's different about Rivera is it's not an investment of PSP, PSP just owns it outright. So that's how they operate. Um, a year later, the Australian Centre for International Corporate Tax Accountability and Research analyzed Rivera's UK operations and structure and found that Rivera had set up structures there to avoid tax on significant public profits. Most recently, PSP has been preying on Canadian and US renters. In January 2021, PSP invested $900 million in Pretium Partners, which funds a real estate company called Progress Residential. Progress has been buying up houses across the U.S., making money by reducing costs on things like maintenance and overhead, and increasing revenues by raising rents and charging fees. Progress is currently under investigation by the U.S. Congress for unlawful evictions during COVID with a disproportionate number of evictions in majority black communities. Through Pretium Partners, PSP also owns Havenbrook Homes, which is being investigated in Minnesota by Attorney General Keith Ellison for failing to keep his properties habitable, deceiving tenants, failing to take lead-based paint safety precautions, and also violating statewide pandemic eviction moratoriums. Through its investment at uh, these apartment buildings called Starlight Apartments in Canada, where low-income tenants are currently protesting rent hikes there. So, Paul, <laughs> what I've just described only includes some of PSP's investments, and those are the ones that have made news, right? They've made news because of they elicited protests, lawsuits, or investigations. While there are all sorts of investors who are potentially bad for our community, Canadian pension funds, and particularly PSP, have clearly demonstrated that profit is their primary motivator, 
and they shouldn't be entrusted with our resources. Stop, 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 stop.